My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letters Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is another beautiful episode of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at conduction of conduction in liquids and gases. Remember, conduction in solids has to do with methods and methods. In methods, conduction is done by free electrons. You have copper, silver, aluminum as good conductors of electricity. They allow current to pass through them and they have lower resistance. Semiconductors can be intrinsic or extrinsic. Pure semiconductors, they do not conduct. But when you add impurities to them, by a process called doping, they begin to conduct. And semiconductors conduct by means of holes, H-O-L-E-S, and electrons. Conductors conduct by means of free electrons. Conduction is in liquid is explained under electrolysis where you see some substances they conduct only when they are in molten state or in solution and there are discharge movement of ions i did a very good job under conduction of electricity in liquids that is under faraday's law of electrolysis electrolysis and faraday's law ladies and gentlemen if you've not looked at episode number 32 and 33 of the 120 days to jam chemistry with flash isaac chemistry please go and take a look at that episode i am begging you in that episode i explained conduction in liquids everything about electrolysis and everything about the faraday's laws including calculations so i shall not mention them this is our concern in this episode. The good news for us is that it is not a very complex phenomenon or a phenomenon where we need to be calculating up and down. It is basically theory and important points that should sink in your head. 1. Gases do not conduct under normal condition. This is because there is no free charge. Gases need external factors to make them to conduct. 2. Gases are ionized to start conducting. For a gas to conduct, you need to ionize the gas. What is ionized? Ionizing the gas means removing electrons from its outermost shell so that there will be presence of free electrons. There will not be conduction without the presence of free electrons. And Ionization of gases can be achieved due to cosmic rays. The presence of these cosmic rays, electron, proton, radiation, will create electric field in gas. And this electric field will accelerate the ions so that collision can take place. The process of doing all this is referred to as cold cathode emission. When you try to create electric field in a gas, to accelerate the ions and electrons for collision. So when there is collision and it is effective, there will be conduction. You call this process cold cathode emission or you call it field emission. F-I-E-L-D. The current carriers in gases are electrons and ions. And the factors affecting conduction in gases are pressure, the voltage you apply, and the mass of air present. Gases conduct better at low pressure and high voltage. You may be asked, at what condition does gas conduct better? When the pressure is low, 
and when the voltage is very high and in the presence of small quantity of air. The three factors affecting conduction in gases are pressure, voltage, and the presence of air. When the voltage is high, the pressure is low, and you have small quantity of air, gases will conduct better. Now, conduction in gases is referred to as discharge. When you say a discharge in gas or discharge in gases, you are simply saying that the gases are conducting. That is a package way of saying conduction in gases. But there is an interesting thing. Conduction in gases, they are accompanied by glow. When gases conduct, you see they begin to glow, presence of glow, photo, fluorescent, or whatever. Isn't it interesting? Gas is conducting, you look at it, there is a glow. Wow! And if the pressure is high, there will not be uh, there will be spark, just ordinary discharge and sparks. But at low pressure, there is no spark. You will see steady conduction and you begin to see glow, begins to glow. So discharges, at low pressure, you see discharge that vary with pressure. Discharges in gases, they vary with pressure. Trust me, this is a very interesting phenomenon. And the applications are things that you know and they are beautiful. For example, your fluorescent lamps, they are discharge tubes with gas at low pressure. They give us glow. So all these lamps you are seeing, they are actually gases conducting electricity. And the different, based on the gas you use, you have different color of glow. If you use neon, you will see orange red glow. Ah, orange red color. If you use sodium, you have a yellow glow, yellow color. If you use air, you have a pink color. If you use mercury, you have a whitish blue glow. So the color of gas depends or is what determines the color of the glow. And another application of conduction in gases is advertising signs. You see all those boards that glow. Most of them are neon signs. They are made of neon. So conduction in gases is so, so interesting. And if you've not looked at conduction in liquids, please go to chemistry episode 32 and 33. I think it will be a bad user experience repeating exactly what I did in chemistry yet again. Knowing that while recording that in chemistry, I had it in mind that it covers everything that physics also requires. With this, we come to the end of this episode. I hope you found this class interesting. Subscribe to this channel if you've not. Get a flash and answer application and feel free to tell all your friends about what is going on here. See ya in the next episode.